This will be a quick walkthrough of the options available in the System menu of the GroupWise Administration Console. It will be brief and fast-paced, but will provide an overview of what each of the components are and what they can do. Let's jump right in with addressing rules. This is a holdover from the early days of email addressing and saw a lot of action before current address formats were standardized. They can still be very useful in certain circumstances, but few people use them. I would recommend you have a look, and if your system has addressing rules, understand why they are there and what they are doing. Also note that search strings that contain an at symbol are disregarded. Admin defined fields allows you to map user properties from a directory source so they can be displayed in the GroupWise address book. If you want to pull a user property that isn't included in the default options, this is where you can set that up. If you have a large system, you may need to divide up the administration workload. The Administrators menu allows you to select users and grant administration rights to the entire system, or to a particular domain, or even just to a single post office. These users can log into the admin console and will have rights to modify objects within their assigned area. Calendar Publishing is where you administer your calendar publishing information if you have installed the Calendar Publishing host server. This makes internal GroupWise calendar information available to web consumers. Directory Associations is where you come to do bulk association of users from a directory source to existing GroupWise users. Having the users associated allows you to do things like LDAP authentication for passwords and to automate synchronization of user information. The Document Viewer agent converts and indexes attached email documents so they can be indexed for searching and for viewing in the Web Access Client. You want to take the time to set up at least one DVA, then point your post office agents to take advantage of it. Otherwise, the POA will take on that responsibility and it can cause performance issues. Address Lookup is a great tool for resolving address questions. You can type an address or a user ID here and it will resolve it. If you have users with similar names or if you get a duplicate name error when creating a new object, you can use this tool to figure out where the duplication is. Expired Records Some organizations are slow to delete a GroupWise account. Instead, they expire the account, which preserves the information but prevents access. This will list all objects that are currently in an expired state. External System Sync allows you to exchange your GroupWise address book with another GroupWise system. Once both administrators have this configured, your respective address books will include information from the other and automatically update. Global Signatures is self explanatory, you can set up a global signature or several that can be attached to all outbound emails. Information gives you some basic data on your GroupWise system. It is also where you can find the name of your system as displayed in this title bar. Internet addressing is where you configure the I domain or domains that will be used by your system. All domains listed here will be considered as internal addresses for routing purposes. LDAP servers is where you define eDirectory or AD directories for use with authentication or user synchronization. The legacy menu gives you a holding area for outdated gateways or software distribution areas. If you have anything listed here, it is probably a great idea to review it to see if it's still being used at all. Link configuration is where you define how various agents route messages to other agents. Back in ancient times, it wasn't uncommon to have dial-up modem connections between office locations, requiring a spoken hub or a circular routing pattern to distribute mail. These days, direct IP links between all agents is usually the most efficient way to go. Pending operations will show you any changes to objects that are still being processed around the system. Record enumerations isn't used often, but it is powerful as it allows you to look inside the various GroupWise databases on a record-by-record -record basis. If you accidentally delete a GroupWise user, you can use the Recover Deleted Account option 
to restore that user's account information as long as you have a backup copy of a domain database. The Restore Area Management allows you to restore deleted emails to accounts, but it requires a complete backup of the entire post office structure in order to work. System Preferences allows you to configure a number of things, as you can see. Perhaps the most useful options here are the default password when creating new users and the ability to lock out older versions of the client if you want to force your users to update. You shouldn't need to mess with your time zones under normal circumstances. However, if the start and stop dates for daylight savings time changes, you may want to come in here and update your time zone to reflect that change. Trusted Applications is where you define the application and generate a key to grant system access to outside applications like GMS and various archive solutions. User Import is similar to Directory Associations, but this will actually create new GroupWise users from the user data in your directory source. It's a very quick way to populate users in a new GroupWise system. And finally, User Move Status shows you the progress of users who you have moved between one post office and another. We hope you find this information useful. Additional details are available in the documentation. If you're interested in formal GroupWise training, please contact us here at Microfocus. Thank you. Thank <music> you.